What's up everybody? This is Brianna Rudder and in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how I did these box sprays on my very own hair. Now this tutorial is very beginner friendly step by step so make sure you're watching everything because I'm going to show you multiple techniques throughout this video. So for starters we're going to go over the supplies which include some edge control, some scissors to help us to trim our hair, a latch hook for actually doing a few techniques, some hair gel, you're gonna need a wide tooth comb and hair growth oil or edge growth oil, a couple of rubber bands for a few other techniques, and we're also gonna need a rat tail comb to help us to part our hair, as well as some crochet hair. This is the Ocean Wave Crochet Hair in the color number T1B27, so it has an ombre effect. The braiding hair I decided to use is color number 30. It's a little lighter than the crochet pieces, but it blends in beautifully. Now we're going to start off with our sections of hair, but first, we need to prep our crochet hair. This will only be added to the very ends of our box braids, and I'm going to show you exactly how you attach it without using any lighters or any flame or any rubber bands. So you divide one lock into four pieces as you see here. When you add your curly piece, this is exactly how it looks. Now let's jump into our first technique. So for our first technique, you're going to use a wide tooth comb and you're going to detangle through your hair. Then you're going to take a rat tail comb to part a very neat section for your box braid. We're going to take a little bit of edge control and you're going to slick this on the ends of your hair as well as the roots. This is very important so you don't have flyaways with your hair. Flyaways is when your real hair sticks out of your braiding hair. So if you put some edge control on your hair, it will stop this from happening. Now the first technique I'm showing you here is the rubber band method. So you're going to use an elastic band, not a regular rubber band because regular rubber bands cause breakage. So now we're going to pinch off some braiding hair and I'm going to show you how you're going to actually prepare the ends. You want the ends to be a slightly tapered look so it can blend in seamlessly with your crochet. So after pulling on random pieces at the ends, you're then going to comb through with your wide tooth comb. You're going to draw your hand through and use your scissors to lightly trim the ends. We don't want it to be a blunt cut, we want it to have a tapered look at the ends. Now you're going to roll this hair in your hand and wrap it around one finger because this is going to make it extremely easy to attach it to your latch hook. So you attach it with the latch open and then once you attach all the hairs making sure it's tight you then close the latch and slide it through to release the latch hook. Now at this point what you're going to do is you're going to pinch off a third size from each leg of the braid so it gives you three equal leg sizes and then you're just going to continue braid going all the way down making sure that you're taking your time to smooth the braiding hair and your real hair that way your braids will be smooth and you will have no lumps or bumps or flyaways always smooth the braiding hair with your real hair now in this tutorial I tried to experiment with the tucking method which is where you hide your real hair color within the braids now of course practice always makes better but I believe that I did a pretty decent job and of course it can be improved and I'm gonna show you how that technique is done and some skills or tips on how you can be just a little bit better with tucking your real hair so now as we're almost near the ends this is about how much braiding hair you want before you add your crochet so at this point what you want to do is add the crochet to two neighboring legs then you just continue braiding as usual now as you're braiding your hair make sure you're going past the braiding hair so that way you only have the silky crochet left over so once we braid past the braiding hair you're then going to do the knotting technique make sure you're paying close attention so you can see how it's being done you pinch off a piece of the curl you wrap it around the braid and you tie a knot and then you're going to do this a few more times so that it reinforces each knot the reason why you want to do this is so you don't have to use any lighters or flame to burn the ends of your braids or you don't have to use nail glue or rubber bands or anything like that you simply use the hair of your braid to secure knots so that it's tightened and it won't unravel so you keep doing this down to the few last strands and you should be left with this result here but first what we want to do to make sure that the curls stay smooth and very beautiful is we take a little bit of gel and we smooth it on the hair and then once you do this you're going to trim the ends of the crochet and you'll be left with this look as you see here so be sure to keep watching for multiple other techniques that I'm going to show you so that you can master whichever ones work for you in your box braids. So this is how one side of the braid look, but we're gonna move on to the next. So now for the next technique, what you're gonna do is take your rat tail comb and part the next part for your box braid. Because for this technique, we are going to be doing the traditional box braid method. So you wanna go ahead and prep your braiding hair like you did the previous actual technique. And then you want to comb it through and trim the ends with scissors, making sure not to cut a blunt cut. You just want a lightly feathered end so you can braid successfully to the tips of your box braids. 
So now at this point, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I always prep the hair in my hand when I'm braiding at the scalp. I pinch off a third from the size of my section so that each leg is equal in length, and then I pinch one of the middle legs with my index and thumb. But I feed in the hair also in my index and thumb, only on one leg, and then I braid a couple of times, making sure to overlap and smooth. I grab that next section you see here into a different leg and I continue braiding. The reason why you want to make sure you separate your section into two legs when you actually separate the hair on your head is because it reinforces the box braid so the box braid won't slip off. If you add your entire part into one leg, the chances of your braid slipping off is higher versus if you divide it into two sections and then braid, it helps to keep your box braid secure. So right now, as you can see here, I'm taking my time to make sure I'm smoothing my real hair underneath each leg. This is very important when it comes to doing the tucking method with your box braids, especially if the braiding hair is a lot lighter than your natural hair color. When doing the tucking, method the number one most important thing is literally just to practice doing it so that way you continue to have a more seamless look with your hairstyle if you want to see me do this tucking method again with different colors let me know down below because I would love to so what I'm going to do is rotate my hands to show you how I just continue braiding at the front and then I make sure as I'm overlapping I'm consciously tucking my real hair so that way it doesn't stick out as much with my braids now normally at the roots you usually see some of your natural hair color and that's okay you just want to make sure that most of your hair is tucked so it gives the illusion that none of your hair is sticking out when all of your braids are finished now I went ahead and turned the braids so it can make it a little easier for me so that way I can keep my real hair color on top of the braiding hair when doing the tucking method it does take a little bit more time than usual because I'm used to braiding my hair with natural black hair color so I don't have to consciously think of tucking my natural hair into the braiding hair but when you do the tucking method it usually takes you almost almost double the amount of time to do it so I highly suggest this style for those who are more advanced and want to experiment with different types of techniques so after braiding all the way down to the end I'm then going to add the crochet hair and I have this a little bit sped up so if it's just a little too fast for you of course you can go back a little bit in this tutorial so that you can see the technique done the first time for those of you who love to watch my videos but have never left a comment before I need you to show me some love for the first time and let me know down below why you like watching my videos and what is it about my videos that you want to see more of so that way I can continue to improve as a creator and show you tutorials that you all would like to see let me know because I can't read your thoughts and if you comment I will be commenting back And this is how the tucking method looks on my braid. Of course, practice makes perfect. So the more I do this technique per request, the better my tucking method will be with my box braids. So let me know if you wanna see me do this method with any other colors. Now I'm gonna show you the very next technique, which is called double box braids. Now with double box braids, the difference between this one and the previous one is that you braid these going all the way down to the end. So that way you're protecting your hair from any manipulation damage because the ends of your braid won't be sticking out since it's braided together and this makes it a lot more smoother when you're braiding your hair as well because you can use this as your third leg so we're using it as our third leg and we're just braiding and then once you actually overlay each piece a couple of times you're then going to pinch off a little bit of hair from each of the braiding hair legs so as you can see here I pinch off a third from one side and then I pinch off a third from the other side so that way all three legs are equal in size now you still want to make sure that you're tucking your real hair underneath the braid so that way it's very seamless once you finish now if I was to add more braiding hair on top of this it will cover up more scalp but I didn't want my braids to be too big because I braided them pretty long and longer braids are usually heavier so I made sure to not add as much braiding hair to each section and this is how it looks on that braid here so now the very last technique that I'm going to show you is the crochet no rubber band no cornrow method that means that I'm just braiding the hair on my scalp just a few times so that way I have a sturdy base to use a crochet hook to loop in my braiding hair 
Now you can choose to braid it down to the ends if you want, but that's a slightly different technique. For this, this is actually way more gentle on your scalp than doing the rubber band method because you're not using the rubber band to secure your base, which can cause breakage if you do the rubber band method too much. So now at this point, after we've looped our hair through, you're gonna pinch off a third from each leg and continue braiding down to the ends. Make sure that if you wanna see some other techniques that you go back and watch those so you can see which one works best for you. And of course, actually do your hair or actually experiment with some type of mannequin head while watching this so that you can visually watch and do it in real time with me. So now as I'm braiding my hair down, I noticed that when I flip the braid the opposite way, I can actually better keep my natural hair on top of the braiding hair. Now I'm not putting my natural hair on top, I'm actually just flipping the braid over so I can see my real hair as I braid. But when the braid goes back to its original position, all of my hair color will be underneath the blonde braiding hair. So you just slightly trim the ends and then you add your curly crochet pieces. And as you can see, this is how my knot looks on this braid here. So after doing the crochet no cornrow technique, this is how my braid looks. And I just have two here for comparison. We are almost to the finish line, ladies, but there's one more important step that you have to do. You have to lightly trim the ends of your box braids because some box braids were a little longer than others. After you finish trimming, this should be the finished result to your box braid hairstyle. If you love these detailed tutorials and want to see more, let me know down below. And I can't wait to show y'all my very next video. So until then, bye-bye.